Look, if we're gonna make a bodega bacon, egg and cheese any sort of way, it's gonna be the right way. back in New York. How would you know that? Because I got Poland Spring. The second you see this, you know someone's in New York. So we're gonna go down to the local bodega. We're gonna go pick up a nice bacon, egg and cheese, taste it. I've had them before, but I need to revise my memory to really make this properly. So they're whipping it up, classic style, on a roll. I did salt, pepper, ketchup, you know. Not always do people do that, but uh, it's a classic. Nothing wrong with it. Somehow they have everything you could possibly need in one place. All things are possible, beautiful. And bacon, egg and cheese is plentiful. And the garbage truck, is loud. Yeah! <laughs> Something special about this. Is it dog poop? Is it drugs? Or is it alcohol that he's gonna drink in public? No, 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 no. This is a bacon, egg, and cheese. When you say the name of this sandwich, please be aware that if you're in New York, for some reason it's all one word. It's bacon, egg, and cheese. The less syllables, the better, I would say. Bah. There it is. But I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> I'll put this in my There are many things of the culture of New York that ties everything together. Earlier, Vikram was talking about how he really doesn't want to live in New York. Fine, everybody teach their own. I'm not sure if I would either, but it's moments like this that do make me want to live in New York. It's a little quaintness of it. Step outside your brownstone or your apartment or whatever, wherever you're living, right? Scroll down, grab a crappy coffee in one of these, and it just feels right. Got all these beautiful buildings, history, but this bacon, egg, and cheese, for some reason, ties it all together for me. I hate when I get a breakfast sandwich that doesn't have enough bacon. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Every breakfast sandwich from every fast food chain, get a little paper thin, razor thin piece of bacon. I don't even know how they slice it that thin. This is chock full of it. Bust and wide open in your mouth. It's a classic. I don't think this is about making it better, but I do think that it's about elevating all of the elements that we love the most about this sandwich and making what I think might be the most iconic bacon, egg and cheese, if not close to it. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen from New York. You already heard my key takeaways, but I have all the flavors in my mind, in my mouth now. So I'm gonna spit all that back up onto a plate. With all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Right, as I've said, this isn't just about a bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwich. It's the culture and the little tricks and things that create something much more special. This is a bacon, egg, and cheese. Now, one of those classic elements is a soft Kaiser roll. Sure, you could go buy one, and I can tell you right now, the local bodega is definitely not making theirs. People are gonna complain. Oh, he bought them. What the fuck? So guess what? I'm making it. So stay in mixer bowl, add 450 grams of all-purpose flour. Yes, I'm using grams on a New York bodega sandwich. Why? Because I want consistency in your bread game. And if you don't want to use grams, link at the bottom of the description for the full recipe. Anyway, in your flour, three grams of food grade amylase powder, nine grams of fine sea salt, and eight grams of sugar. Mix until combined. Separately, you'll need 170 grams of water at around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Whisk in eight grams of instant yeast until dissolved, followed by one large egg. And with your stand mixer fitted with le spiral, begin mixing at medium low and add your yeasty egg. Let that mix until you get a rough dough, then add in 28 grams of unsalted softened butter. Keyword is softened here, pal. All right, don't make any mistakey wakeys. Mix completely until incorporated, then continue to knead for two to three minutes or until you get a smooth, supple dough. Pop that into a grease bowl and rise for one hour or till doubled. Punch that brother down. Cut into six even pieces around 130 grams each. Roll into toit balls. Did you know that many things start with balls? I don't know if that's true or not. Now place those balls on a parchment lined baking sheet. And once you have all your balls evenly spaced apart, optionally, but ideally, use a Kaiser press, link in the description for the one that I use, and press that until almost to the point of touching the baking sheet, but not all the way through the dough. Repeat with all your balls, spray their tops with nonstick spray, flip them over, and cover with greased plastic wrap to proof for 25 minutes at room temperature. This is a good time to preheat your oven to 375 Fahrenheit if you're thinking ahead. And once they're done resting, gently flip them all back over, brush each bun lightly with whole milk, then sprinkle all of them with poppy seeds, and then pop into your preheated oven for 15 to 18 minutes or until a beautiful golden brown Kaiser roll emerges. Let those cool completely on a wire rack, and I'll tell you what, brother, you're about three quarters of the way to a beautiful sandwich. Let's start our sando off with Mr. Traditional, a classic bacon, egg, and cheese with salt, pep, and ketchup. This is one of the only ways you'll see me doing something as sinister as putting ketchup on my eggs. First, obviously slice your rolls in half, lightly toast them. For each sandwich, you'll need two whole eggs cracked and whisked, so eight total if you're making four sandwiches. So I guess we'll work off the idea that we're making four sandwiches. Season to taste with salt, which again, it's okay to season them ahead with salt as long as you're cooking them hard, which we will here. Whisk until homogenous. Now you'll need one pound of applewood smoked bacon cooked however you like it. The easiest way is to pop it on a baking sheet and into a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes or until cooked to your liking. Look, I know that there's the debate of, oh, do we go crispy? Do we go floppy? Listen, this is not the time for flaccid bacon, all right? I'm all for a moist bacon, but I want this 
crunchy, okay? Part of the texture. Drain lightly on a paper towel to soak up the excess greasiness, and then get a 10 inch nonstick pan, heat over medium heat, add about a tablespoon of unsalted butter or just enough to coat the pan. And once that's melted and boobling, pour in about two whole eggs worth of your beaten eggs. And as that cooks, bring the sides to the center of the pan, letting the uncooked egg fill up the now empty space in the pan. Repeat all the way around. And once that egg is nearly fully set, add one to two slices of American cheese to the center. Feel free to give it a little bit of pep. Then fold one side of the egg towards the center, then the bottom of the egg also towards the center, the other side of the egg towards the center. See where we're going here? And finally, the top down to enclose a little parcel of egg. Sign it yours truly. Make sure the got dang address is correct for once and send that shit off to your nearest got dang bun. Top it with your cooked bacon and then on the other bun, hit with ketchup, pepper, and salt to taste. Top that messy thing. And this is the most important part. In foil, parchment, or ideally a sandwich wrapper, wrap that thing as tightly as so that this is essentially steaming the bread to get that traditional texture you'll expect from a good old bacon egg and cheese. Now cut it in half. Good lord. <laughs> it's a goddamn cross section. I'm gonna need to go take a lap. It's doing something to me. And of course, don't forget the Bev or have Hellfire from all New Yorkers ring down upon your sins. Now, let's taste test. Mr. Original, let's pop him out. And you look at this cross section. I mean, God, that is just good. You can really taste why this is so special to so many people. The saltiness, cheese is melty and ooey gooey. The bun is so soft from like steaming inside of this. That's the key. Crunchy bacon, and then of course, a little bit of balancing on that richness with some ketchup. Normally I would never put ketchup on a breakfast sandwich. That is just good. All right, that's out of the way. Let's try another one that you guys on my Instagram DMs just kept suggesting. It's literally the exact same thing. Kaiser roll toasted, eggs, cheese, fold, egg down, bacon down. But this time instead of ketchup, you're gonna take a little bit of grape jelly and spread it on both cut sides of your toasted bread for some unexplainable reason. You know, I thought I was getting pranked when I saw this request so many times, but you know what? I decided let's try it, but uh, not so sure about it though. Now, speaking of never putting stuff on a breakfast sandwich, grape jelly, really weird, kind of annoying to be honest. A lot of people asked for it. In my research, it was pretty prevalent. If I smoked a lot of weed, I would think this is good. That's who orders this. Part of me wants to like it and part of me is like, Man, about this. I will say this, it provides the same level of sweetness that the ketchup does. I can see how it could be used the same way. I don't know that I would order it again like that, but it wasn't bad. It does cut the richness, but it's the fruitiness that's a little out of the way for me. So I guess it depends on the jam that they use or the jelly. Not bad, not my first choice. This is a personalized sandwich, okay? Relax. Last but not least is the Deep Pockets Bacon, Egg, and Cheese that you'll almost definitely never see in Le Bodega. But we're gonna do it anyway. Butter in the pan, heat over medium heat, melt till bubbling, add your eggs, a touch of fresh sliced chives, let that cook. While that's going, cut a croissant in half, place on a heated griddle iron, top with a slice of Emmental cheese, and this time fold your egg into more of a rectangular shape. No cheese needed on the inside of this one. Pop that hot boy onto your cheese croissant, fill it with your nicest, most expensive bacon. Hit it with some hot sauce to taste, another layer of Emmental, the top of your croissant, and Press. And what happens after that? <laughs> well, uh, it got a little more flat than intended. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. There's something here. I'm sure there's something here. This is sort of like, I guess, uh, the Cubano of croissants, maybe? That's kind of cool. Let's just taste test it anyway. Last one, my uh, flattest concoction on the show in history, which is kind of fun. It's almost like a little finger food. Did somebody say, oh, bonjour, little old dear. Every New Yorker watching this is like, what is that? I get it. I don't know. Honestly, it's kind of good. Kendrick, do you want to try this? Pano. All right, Vikram, you're trying the fancy one. So here's a fancy fork. <laughs> oh, if he wanted me to feed him, I should have fed him. Mm. Despite how flat it is, it's actually pretty good. There's something fine dining for this. I guarantee you some restaurants have just like plate it like this, standing straight up and a little, little quenelle of sauce next to it, boom, $13. You. It's very good. The shape is off-putting, but the taste is very, very yeah. good. Yeah, it looked like a flat turtle. It looked like if a turtle got ran over by a car. I've seen a turtle ran over by a car. It's ugly. I'm gonna go cry now. I didn't run over it. <laughs> this is not a bacon, egg, and cheese. This is the bacon, egg, and cheese. And now you know how to harness its power. But you wanna know what else's power you can harness? B-roll.